Hey family, back again, keeping it real with Pastor J, Dr. J, or just Jomo. Today's session, I want to deal with identity. One of the biggest struggles I have and I see with people is they don't know who they are. And if you don't know who you are, you will settle for identity that's less than who you are. Who am I? Well, Genesis 1.26 says this, that we are made in God's image and God's likeness. So first off, you're not junk. If you understand that I am made in God's image and God's likeness, that means I can do like and be like God. Now, I know some of y'all say, man, that's blasphemous. That's crazy. No, the Bible says in Genesis 126, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So right now, I want you to repeat after me. I am made in God's image and God's likeness. Come on, come on, come on. Say it with your chest. I am made in God's image and God's likeness. One more time. I am made in God's image and God's likeness. So what does that mean? Well, how did God create the world? Well, if you go through Genesis chapter one, God created the world with his words. So if I am made in God's image and God's likeness, I can create my world with my words. I repeat, your words create your world. Your words create your world. So oftentimes you may not even realize this, but you are exactly where you said you would be. You live in the harvest of your words. I read a study that 94% of prisoners, one time in their life, someone had told them that they're going to be in jail. I'm going to say that again. 94% of those who are incarcerated, somebody told them they'd be locked up. What are you saying? There's power in words. So you have to be mindful of the words you use because your words create your world. You are living in the harvest of your words. So if you don't like where you are, start by changing your words. Your words will change your world. We are made in God's image and God's likeness and God don't make junk. If you want something different, you got to do something different. Change begins with you. You got to watch your mouth. Proverbs 18.21 says this, for death and life are in the power of the tongue. I repeat, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And it says this, and you shall eat the fruit thereof, meaning we eat our words. So if you don't like what you eat and change your words, because you will eat your words. Now, it says death and life, meaning death, something dies with your words. Life, something is brought to life with your words. So you have to understand that many times the greatest enemy of our future is our mouth. I say it again. The greatest enemy of your future is your mouth. We say these things flippantly. We say these things like they don't have power, but you have to understand you are made in God's image and God's likeness. And God created the world with his words and you create your world with your words. I love Muhammad Ali. I love how he spoke. I'm the best. I'm the greatest. Well, guess what he became? The greatest. Do you know Arnold Schwarzenegger, the governor, the bodybuilder, and the actor? Do you know that when he was a teenager, he said this, I will be Mr. Olympia. I will be a movie star and I will marry a Kennedy. Do you believe that Joker did all three? Well, guess what? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You create your world with your words. So the question I have to ask you is, have you checked your mouth? Have you checked your words? Here's a test I want y'all to do. I want you for the next day, start to write down the words that come out of your mouth. Are they mainly positive or negative? Do you understand that negative words actually rewire your world to failure? I'm going to say it again. Negative words rewire your world to failure. Do you know that even though you may be speaking sarcastically, your body is responding to those words? See, the mind doesn't understand sarcasm. The words you use have actions. So I have to be mindful with the words I use. Second Corinthians 4, 4, 13 says this. We have the same spirit of faith as those who believe and spoke. Therefore, we also believe and we also speak. I'm going to say it again. We have the same spirit of faith as those who believed and spoke. We also believe and we speak. So the greatest men and women of the Bible spoke by faith and they manifest the words they spoke. 
The Bible says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, speak to your mountain. What mountain do you need to move? What opposition's coming at you? It's by words that we win. Those words will change our world. So I have to ask yourself today, what kind of words do you use? Are they positive? Are they negative? Do your words build up or tear down? Do your words construct or deconstruct? Because your words will create your world and you reap what you sow. We have to be mindful with these words that we use. The Bible says in Job 22 and 28, it reads, you will decide, you will decree, and it'll be established. You decide, you decree, it's established. Look at the order. First, you got to make a decision what words you're going to use. Then you're going to decree them, and then it'll be established. That's Genesis chapter 1. God decided, God decreed, and it was established. So you, my friends, what kind of world do you want? It's locked up in your words. Your words create your world. The Bible says this, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We have to be very judicious and wise with our words and our confessions. So for a homework assignment, this is what I want you to do. I want you to create daily confessions that you repeat to yourself. There's a great book called 10X by a guy named Grant Cardone. And one thing he does, there's daily confessions and things that you say on a repeated basis that will build you success. So what things that you want to change in your life you need to start speaking over your life. Whatever things you want to change, you have to start decreeing and declaring these things over your life if you want to be successful. So remember this, change begins with you. If you want something different, you have to do something different. For if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. You are the main character in your story. You are the star actor. So. If you want a different outcome, you got to make sure that you're willing to take different actions. And everything in our world is created with a word. The Bible says this, the heavens and earth was all created with words and the world was formed with words. So today, choose your words wisely. The Bible tells us that every word will be tracked. Every word will be documented. So we have to be mindful. Let me tell you a story. I was at a big conference. And at this particular conference, I hooked up with one of my friends. We became good friends. It's the first time we ever met, but we got hooked up and we're friends. We're balling. We're having a great time, right? So uh, towards the end of the conference, he says, Joma, what you doing next month? He says, there's a big conference that I'm going to be at. Do you want to come? I said, nah, not really. You know, I don't really like the way that that conference flows. He says, for real? I said, yeah, man, I'm good. I, I've been to that conference a couple times. I don't really want to go again. He said, oh, man, I, I didn't know that you felt that way because, see, uh, the guest speaker, uh, he's my best friend and, and you'd sit up front with me. Don't you hate it sometimes when you put your foot in your mouth? I had a great opportunity, but what did I do? I killed it with my mouth. My wife one time, she was talking to me and I have the habit of trying to memorize people's names. Now, I, I, I don't have it all down, but I tried to memorize names. It didn't work out. So one Sunday at church, I, I, I called the lady uh, by name, and she says, Pastor, that's not my name. And you know how your face just falls down when you feel stupid? So I called her by the wrong name, and my wife was there, and my wife just looked at me. I don't know what it is about uh, women when you're wrong. They just kind of make you feel some kind of way. But anyway, she told me, I told you, stop trying to memorize people's names. So I said to her, I said, babe, I'm just trying to be the best. And then she said this joke. She says, Jomo, do you think Joel Osteen knows everybody's name? I said, no. She said, do you think T.D. Jakes knows everybody's name? I said, no. So why are you trying to know everybody's name? 
And then me and my feelings says, well, I ain't T.D. Jakes, I ain't Joe Osteen. And she says, and so I got all in my feelings. And later she came back and said, Jomo, I wasn't saying you're them. I'm saying that you have to get ready to be like that. I was trying to give you a compliment. Isn't it funny how you could just put your foot in your mouth with the words you use? So then I guess what? I had to apologize because she saw me greater than I saw myself. Understand, it's with our words that we win. It's with our words that we lose. So today, choose your words wisely. And let's make an assignment to hold each other accountable to using positive words and not negative words. My last stat before I go, do you know this? For every positive word used, I should say it this way, for every negative word used, you need at least seven positive words to counteract the negative word. I repeat, for every negative word spoken, you need at least seven positive words to fix that. Let me close with this example. If you tell your wife something don't look good on her, you gonna say you have to say a whole bunch of positive things to fix that one thing you said. You can tell your wife, I love you. The one day you say, man, I ain't feeling you today. You better say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Because <laughs> it takes so much to fix one negative statement. I love y'all. See y'all soon. Remember, change begins with you. If you want something different, you got to do something different. And your words create your world. God bless y'all.